welcome everybody. I'm just gonna give a second for everyone to settle in and join the room. And uh, usually what happens is some, some folks join a little bit later, so we'll just keep letting them in as they try to join the session. So I am going to highlight, spotlight your video, Jane. Okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, you've made it. You've uh, spent the whole day with us and now you get to enjoy this wonderful work that Jane has to share with us. Uh, when she first reached out and told me about the work she had been doing for her MA, uh, I was so impressed and excited about just the diversity of explorations that she did. And I knew right away that that would be something that everyone here would be interested in taking a look. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it to Jane. Jane, welcome. Hi, thanks everybody. Welcome. Uh, it's a bit chilly and kind of nine o'clock at night here in England. Um, but I see some nice um, sunny days and some of the people here. So welcome everybody. So my name is Jane and um, this is my exploration into typography of Anne Lister's Crypt Hand. Um, I'm a graphic designer and at the moment I'm a student at the University of the West of England in the UK studying on my graphics MA. And in this session I'll be sharing with you some of my work. Um, I have journeyed um, from recreating some of Anne Lister's ephemera to digitising her crypt hand which has opened up new avenues in exploring text as image for me. Um, can I direct you uh, all just to the chat column that hopefully a lot of you will have open because you'll be experts at Zoom by now with today's um, sessions. And at the very top, it says iJack. Now this is an augmented reality app, which I've been working with augmented reality in the work that I've been doing. So if you were interested in downloading this app, there's a link here for anyone who has an iPhone and there's also a link for Google Play. I've just got a couple of examples of some early augmented reality work. It's very simple stuff um, in the presentation. So if you wanted to experience what it's like to look at an image and then hold up your phone and see something else change on their reveal, as it were, um, then please do download these and by all means just delete them at the end. If you don't want to do that, which is absolutely fine, of course, um, I have got some of them that I can just show you the way I've made the slides. So if not, worry not. Um, OK, so I'm going to begin share share my screen with you now and um, get some visuals for you. Let's hope this goes smoothly. says here we go there we are how's that can everybody see that yes yeah i'm getting some nods Great, that's lovely. Okay. So in Anne's journals, she wrote, I know my own heart and understand my fellow man, but I am made unlike anyone I have ever met. I dare to say that I am like no one in the whole world. For me, this spoke of an inner truth and an outer knowledge. We see the seed of what I'm calling and identify with as, as the queer experience. Life after this moment of realization, be it in the 19th century or the 21st, is the interplay of the hidden and the revealing <clears throat> of aspects, truths and emotions of ourselves and our lives for those who identify as part of the queer community. So my research and my pieces seek to explore this interplay by using Anne's crypt hand, I believe 
demonstrates the very nature of the queer experience. The crypt hand hides her life and her feelings. The discovery of her journals and the subsequent rehiding and the final discovery that eventually reveals her life through the decoding and the creation of the digital archives at Calderdale. For me, this goes further into the essence and depth of a hidden experience and life of a fascinating, intelligent and adventurous lesbian woman <clears throat> that all of us in some way have come to either admire or, or love, uh, be very amused by as well. Um, uh, very, very interesting figure. So from the past to the present, from paper to digital, these elements in the journey of the journals are echoed in my work. So on this slide, you can see an original letter from Anne to Eliza, which is on the left. And on the right is an example of Anne's crossed hand. So this is the, some of the ephemera I very first um, became familiar with, and it's where I started my explorations. And so I thought I would try to recreate these. Sorry so to these, interrupt you, Jane. Uh, just yeah. so you know, you're sharing your whole desktop. Did you want to oh. share? Oh, <laughs> no. It's a, That's, it's okay. Can you see all my notes? <laughs> yeah. It, if you click stop sharing and then just try again and select only the slides, you should be fine. Okay. I thought I was doing that, um, but obviously not. So, okay. So if I... Click share Sorry. screen and then instead of the first option, there should be uh, one lower on the screen that is just your slides. Okay, so I just have to. Okay. Here we are. That's Perfect. better, isn't it? Got Sorry it. about that. Oh, no see my reading my script verbatim. Okay, so, <laughs> so here now you can see without seeing my whole desktop. Um, my attempts with the dipping pen and ink along with some aged paper um, with the cross hand which I obviously overdid the aging process with the Yorkshire tea um, which is very strong there. Um, it's here that I kind of saw the creative limitations in simply just replicating Anne's hand and the desire to push further saw me collate a digital version of Anne's crypt hand So here's my first incarnation of the digital version. I later developed this to be more nuanced with multiple typefaces on each of the characters. So I was looking at um, aspects of typography and I've always been drawn to glyphs. Um, these are individual type characters. It can be a letter, a number or a punctuation mark. Um, for me, there's a strong graphic and image sensibility to pulling letters and punctuation away from a word and or a sentence and placing them on their own. Or so it enables you to combine them in an unorthodox way. So this was a perfect way for me to play with the architecture of Anne's crypt hand and to see what else it could become. So this is one of my early successes in glyphs experiments. So this is made up entirely of Anne's cipher. Um, and the they've kind of taken the forms of characters really, which this one represents Anne is called the lioness. Um, if we look for a moment at the image, which is a risograph print, and if you're not familiar with this type of printing. It's like a photocopier machine meets silkscreen printing. So it uses the same methodology as silkscreen, only it's quicker because it's done through like a photocopying style machine. So the lioness design was significant to me because it was not only until further research that I came to realize that there was a portrait of Anne with a heart-shaped pin on the collar of her dress, which a heart is formed using the crypt hand of two A's in the lioness's mouth here. 
Um, there's also a version of the Lister coat of arms that has a lion within. So having these kind of serendipitous outcomes, it gave me the impetus to kind of pursue the glyph characters further. So if, if anybody has downloaded the iJack app, then all you need to do is go open the app and then hold the app up in front of the image and you'll see it's a very quick change because this was kind of my first experiment at doing this and so for those that don't have the iJack has everyone had a little chance to can see people don't want to go too quickly it's a very quick change. Does that happen for people? A few confused faces. Having just a little scroll through to see if people have got that. Okay. So for those of you who don't have the app, this is what they saw. Oh, gone too far, sorry. This is what they saw. So the image changes colour to Anne's signature black and her crypt hand is deciphered at the bottom, I know my own heart. This is, you know, like I said, it's a very basic augmentation and the work I'll be doing in further will be more animated and motion graphic based. Um, so if anyone wants to have another try, I can see someone holding up their phone there. So just quickly it will turn okay there we are um so the the using i've been using silk screen printing and riso printing and the interplay between old skills based printing methods and the emerging technology of augmented reality something that is an important element of my work not only does it bridge a time gap in two disciplines but it presents a great opportunity for the viewer to actually experience the hidden and the revealing, bringing the viewer into the work. Without them triggering the, the AR, it remains hidden in plain sight. So on this slide, you can see some of the recent glyph characters that I've been designing. I've delved into many kind of different typefaces to create more texture and variety of shape expanding my um, and list crypt hand digital library it's with these glyphs that i go on to explore bringing new patterns together with the glyphs themselves so every single that i haven't changed so when i look through the typefaces and i select all the different characters that that she has used i i don't change them so these aren't altered in any way i don't then try and make them fit or make them bring them together or make them work they're kind of in their pure essence and that felt really important because it needed to stay true to what you know the code that she had written so here i introduce another strand of my exploration and that is the manipulation of the digital crypt hand so within the glyphs nothing changes but within this i'm like okay let's push this and see whether we can actually extrude and warp the type into new shapes which in itself is creating another layer to the code which you can see on the left then these animate these are kind of animating forms so this is another augmented reality moment for anyone who's got the app and managed to get that to work is if you hold it in front of the right hand side image the crypt hand at the bottom doesn't translate but what happens is the a kind of basic animation starts happening which is kind of mutating through the different phases that you can see for those who don't who haven't got the app you can see that on the left hand side those different phases of movement of how i've manipulated the, the type forms And so when I started doing this, initially, some of the shapes instantly reminded me of mid-century fabric patterns. 
in the UK from, you know, from designers such as Lucian Day. And so you can see a set of six patterns I designed from that type that I had manipulated. And then I've gone on to create fabric via digital textile printing, which you can see the bottom three images there as the textiles that I've printed. And as I've kind of progressed through my design process, I've realized how connected I am to pattern, which is quite a surprise for me. Um, but it, it's very important in the telling of women's history, creatively in terms of design history and the recognition of women um, in designers, but also historical happenings, the recording of historical happenings. So it's been dismissed within arts, canons to craft and has had a long and hard kind of climb to be recognized and celebrated uh, as works created during the Bauhaus era, for instance, which I believe are powerful and relevant works. Perhaps I could create a fabric that is black, but has a deep midnight blue pattern, subtle but interesting, something Anne would have considered appropriate to her taste. That may be something I might consider um, later on if I haven't got too much to do. Um, so here are some of my new patterns, um, which are using Anne's crypt hand in its unmanipulated form. So we're going back to more of a purist um, handle on things. And I've used a woodblock print typeface style, which is inspired by Emery Douglas. And he was an illustrator for the Black Panther Party who created beautiful work um, using this simple um, illustration line style combined with this really skillful use of pattern. Um, here's one example of his work. And the way that he's used this pattern for this woman's scarf and the guy's hat and even the texture on the skin. And I was so taken by this, the kind of simplicity, but how it managed to create a really interesting images and, and give, a, give a sense of story and a, a place and time. I found that very powerful. Um, and so I went on then to experiment with my new patterns with just a couple of the glyphs to see, see what would happen. So here I've experimented with the interplay with positive and negative pattern, addition and subtraction. Um, and then we go on to outlines, so creating them, the glyphs in outlines and then putting pattern on the back. And then I've moved to inserting the pattern within the glyph character and then really starting to push it. So we've got pattern at the back on this right hand one, we've got color in there now and we've got a pattern within the face and it's just really pushing and seeing aesthetically uh, what looks good, but also what packs it with more, 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 you know, more, let's have more pattern. I've just gone, I've just gone for it really. And then I've gone really crazy here on the left hand side there where we, we've got an extreme amount of, of pattern there. Um, I've really, really enjoyed making these. I just, yeah, there's something about them that, I'm really enjoying um, and it's kind of trying to deepen kind of more embed the the crypt hand in a way that you wouldn't expect to see it and it's deeply embedded within these designs um, this this character most of the characters don't spell anything that they're, they're, they're just they come together and make these forms although this character does and this character is called Oddo because that's, that's what they spell. Um, there's something quite stoic about Oddo. Maybe because they don't really have a mouth. I don't know. Um, but uh, this kind of concludes the glyphs. Um, I'll go into text testing next week where I'm creating apparel. Um, so we'll be silk screen printing on t-shirts and then seeing how far the technology, whether the technology can cope with fabric on a, on a body shape. And if it can, 
then we'll see whether this could be a vehicle to introduce more people to Anne Lister and her story. So, oh, that's a neat shirt you've got or a lovely shirt you've got and go, yeah, scan this and then boom, something changes on it and it creates and it kind of opens up this dialogue about Anne and I just thought this would be an interesting thing to do. Um, yeah, so there we are, that's that. I can't see the chats, by the way, so I don't know whether things are coming in or whether this is an appropriate point before I go on to another bit of work I've been doing is if there's any questions or people got any comments or or anything uh, there's a lot of excitement in chat about your work so far jane um, oh, okay here we are i've got the chat now yeah yeah does um, anybody have a question uh if so raise your hand uh using the participant panel and we'll call on you sure i just didn't want to race through too many images too fast and then kind of yeah lose people or i think we're good anything. if you want to go to the okay. next section cool excellent that's marvelous okay Okay, there we are. So that, that's the slide that concludes it, yeah. So I love her. This, is, this, this one is, um, I don't know why it's a her, but for some reason, this one is gendered. Um, and I'm really using the subtraction here with the cutaways and overlaying, and there's something, I don't think the bottom of the eyes necessarily work perfectly because it's a little bit clashing with, with the other pattern, but She's got great pink lipstick on, so who cares, right? Okay, so here we come to a kind of return to the manipulation of the type. And this, this for those code breakers, will know um, spells queer. Um, and I've taken the liberty for aesthetic reasons not to use Anne's shorthand for the double E and duplicated the three for the two E's um, because aesthetically it was the right choice to make. Um, changing the typeface also really breathes new life into it, I think, for me. And I think that they will be in very interesting to work with within the augmented reality. So I'm planning on creating um, some more work in the augmented reality with these. And then I've gone on to make a few more changes. So they're the same set, but if you can see, they kind of change. If I go between the two, you can see the bottom row where you see a lot more of the architecture of the type, and then it becomes more blocky with these others. And I mean, for me, they're really architectural. They kind of remind me of kind of like, um, fire escapes in New York or, you know, the back of buildings or that kind of stuff. And I just, yeah, having grown up with things like the streets of San Francisco and things like that on TV in the seventies and eighties, it kind of really takes me back to kind of these American scenes and films and stuff that I used to watch as a kid. And the color brings a play to it, kind of puts it in a different place as compared to the bat, black, which is kind of a bit more imposing and a bit more stark. And then it kind of, you know, really lightens it up and becomes more of a fun, fun thing with the, with the bright colors. And here I've just pulled out some of the individual numbers for you here for the queer. I mean, th this, this I think probably is one of my favorites. Um, and so color is really important and you know it's a great influencer to how we see and read the images um so as i said i've played with the bright and i've played with the kind of black and white but i also wanted to elevate the images by using kind of regal colors such as gold and deep blues you know perhaps a sumptuous purple so this is this is an image of that so this is kind of a simple poster really um, I'll see what happens in the silk screen printing room when I get in there. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for some quite stunning results with this because I've worked with gold. And when you're actually printing with the gold in the silk screen printing room, it's just, yeah, it's really, viv it's, it's amazing. It's like, there's a great texture, but also because has a real impact. And there, there we go. So uh, this is the end of my presentation. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. 
um, I'm deeply connected to the pursuit of visibility, of revealing and hiding in relation to women histories. I look for inspiration and examples to those who've broken kind of the mold of gender expectation. Um, and I've done this through academia, organi organizations and projects that I've been part of. And I'm happy to be finally doing this through my graphic design. Um, what this work can go on to become in the storytelling of Anne Lister, I don't know, but I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to share it with you all. Um, my thanks to Livia and for their help and all the Summit crew for such a great platform to share. So thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, there we are. That's that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Jane. I hope you didn't um, rush it too much. And so, but and yeah. The, the, the chat here is like incredibly excited. Uh, so uh, we're almost at the top of the hour. So what I want to ask is, is there a way for people to find your work or a way to contact you if they are interested in learning more or maybe if any of the work you create becomes available for people, how they might reach you? Well, I have not at the moment because I'm in my last year of my MA. So this work that I've done now is now going to be translated into the actual posters and then I'm going to animate the augmented reality in that. But once that is done, then um, I hope to have that up on like a website or something. But if anyone's interested um, in contacting me at all, I'm just going to put my email address in here. Um, in the chat. There we are, janescoutwood.com, um, at gmail.com. So yeah, because you never know, once those t-shirts are done, sweetie. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I'm just really grateful to, to this platform. I just, it blows my mind that there's an analyst to summit. I'm just like, oh my gosh, just amazing, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. This has been really great. Um, and I'm sure you'll hear some feedback through your email uh, after this. Uh, so this concludes our session. Uh, we're getting heading back to the water closet now for our last round of bingo uh, for the day. If you haven't participated in it yet, it's a really wonderful opportunity to hear the diaries read out loud. Uh, so I will see you all there shortly. See you, see you there. Thanks a million, everybody. Take care. Bye.